10 with a Barracuda. Barracudas have been known to attack things larger than themselves. They reach lengths of 6 feet and weigh over 100 pounds. They also have very sharp dagger like teeth and they use these to pierce through their prey. They are known as a very dangerous fish who attack divers without any obvious reasons. So you can imagine that it would be extremely scary if something like this happens to you. You see that big flash of silver? Did you see that? Yes, I did. Oh, that was like what do you guys do in this situation? I wouldn't want to have a battle with a barracuda on my boat. I feel like the fish had the upper hand, even though he was out of the water. I think it must be his teeth. I'd be way too scared to go near this thing, let alone trying to purposely catch one of these monsters. But apparently a lot of these fishermen try to catch barracudas because their meat is really good. But I'll never know because I am not going to catch one. Next up on our list, number nine is this fishing accident. Well, his first mistake was going fishing on a little tiny kayak. What was is he thinking? I mean, he was just setting himself up for failure right at the start. But going fishing in a little kayak, you basically are saying that you don't expect to catch anything big or worthy. But anyways, this man was fishing when all of a sudden he caught a really big animal that actually dragged him into the water. Once he was in the water, he immediately began swimming to his friend's large boat. And in the video, you can hear his friend saying that it was a shark. All right, so his second mistake was fishing in a shark infested water with a tiny little kayak. What if you just flipped over? That is life bait for the shark. The only two things that he did right was wear his life jacket and swim like hell to his friend's bigger boat. Otherwise, he could have given that shark a nice tasty snack, if you know what I mean. Fisherman charged by a sea lion breaks into number eight. I mean, is this real life right now? You don't hear about this every day, but you know what? Take a look at this clip. This is one angry sea lion. The sea lion was probably pissed off because the fisherman was stealing all of his food or he was being tricked by the lure and he thought it was a fish. Either way, the sea lion wasn't having it. He was just letting the fisherman know that this is his turf and the fisherman is encroaching on it. I just love the part when the fisherman fails so hard at running away. It's like he forgot how to run or just laid down in the sand, accepting his fate. But the sea lion spared him his life that day. Male sea lions can be extremely territorial and they have actually been known to attack humans. Well, obviously, we just saw that video. Number seven takes us over to the deep sea fishing disaster. Deep sea fishing can be extremely dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. When you're deep sea fishing, you have the potential to catch some pretty disturbing, scary, and horrific animals. So let's take a look at what this unfortunate fisherman caught. What you're looking at right now came straight from the depths of hell. Okay, not really, but the thing is still pretty terrifying. A fisherman in Florida accidentally caught a very rare goblin shark while he was deep sea fishing. He was about 10 miles off the coast of Key West, Florida, when he managed to reel in this gross looking fish into his boat. Can we all just take a moment and just look at this guy's teeth? I mean, they look like a prehistoric animal that should have went extinct millions of years ago. Their jaws can expand forward to pick up prey and their razor sharp teeth can easily tear their flesh apart. They are also known as the vampire shark because they don't like the light so that's why they live in the depths of the ocean. Greedy shark swims into number six. Fishermen are used to sharks coming in at the last minute and taking a bite of their catch but they are fishing in the open ocean. But for those amateur fishermen they got the shock of their lifetime when this happened to them. Hey. Oh, he's got no line. <laughs> that wheel line. Yeah, like I said, you wouldn't expect a shark to steal your dinner when you're fishing on the dock near a pier. So I think these people got a serious dose of reality when the shark came in and scared them to death. I don't think I would be swimming anywhere near this dock from now on. Actually, after watching this video, I don't really feel like swimming in any oceans, rivers, or anything that shark confessed for a very long time. Or ever. The extremely violent fish splashes onto this list at number 5. The fisherman got a lot more than he bargained for when his big catch of the day actually got revenge on him. Take a look for yourselves. 
Porque lá é maior, não é? É só levar o saco na frente dele, ó. Ei, ele vai ficar acabado. Okay, see, I wasn't kidding. This group of fishermen caught a huge arapaima fish, and they tried to drag the fish onto shore in order to kill it. Well, the fish had no intention of dying that day. This is a warrior fish. The fish was desperately trying to escape by flapping around, and he ended up slapping one of the men square in the face, which caused him, you know, psh, psh, a knockout punch. You can see the man unconscious, covered in blood, and you can also hear one of the other men dying of laughter. I, I don't know if I would go save my friend. A, a fish just slapped you in the face. I would be R-O-F-L-ing on the floor. I, I guess you know who your real friends are. Your real friends would be the ones actually laughing on the floor. If they're a fake friend, they would have come at your help. <laughs> okay, crazy fishing accident sinks into number four. A lot of fishermen have been injured while fishing. There are a lot of safety hazards that fishermen need to be aware of on the daily basis because it is considered to be a very dangerous job or recreational activity. Well, here's a video clip of a man who is recreationally fishing off of his boat. Everything seems to be going smoothly so far, right? Well, it looks like he caught a marlin and he is trying to reel him in and then this happens. <laughs> this marlin was like, nope, not today. He decided to fight back with this giant spear on top of his head and it sounds like he managed to stab one of his fishermen on the boat. After he pierced the fisherman with his razor sharp spear, he managed to make a safe return back into the ocean. Well, I think it's safe to say that these fishermen have learned their lesson and I think they'll be retiring their fishing rods. A hungry, hungry hippo darts into number three and I'm not kidding. When I was younger, I always thought the hippos were pretty cute and of course, pretty chill. But then I grew up and I came to the harsh reality that hippos are actually very violent creatures who are extremely territorial. A couple of fishermen found this out when they were out of the water trying to catch some fish for dinner. They had no idea that a hippo would actually do this. Watch. Whoa. Close, dude. There's another one though. Where's the other one? Okay, what the heck just happened? Is this real life right now? Did you guys see the size of the wake that this ginormous hippo created? Hippos can swim at a speed of eight kilometers per hour or five miles per hour in the water, which is almost the speed of Michael Phelps. Which means if you see one coming, you have no chance of surviving. So now you know that hippos are pretty quick in the water. And oh yeah, their bite force is 1,821 PSI. And in case you're wondering, yes, that is very, very strong. Hippos are also known to knock over small boats and attack the people on board. So I probably wouldn't be messing around with the hippo if I was them. I would max out my boat's motor and head for dry land. A kayaker catches an alligator in at number two. What are they thinking? And yeah, you've heard that right. If I was in a little kayak and I accidentally caught a huge alligator, I would probably myself or have a heart attack. Either way, I would be dead. In the video, we have an innocent kayaker who discovered an old pool noodle that was floating in a murky swamp. When he went in to pull it out of the water, he got a lot more than he bargained for. Watch. I think we got a garfish, dude. Be careful, Evan. Oh my God! That's a big ass gator, buddy. Okay, let's watch that again, but in slow-mo, because why not? Okay, so I'm pretty sure his young son is in the back of his kayak too. He wasn't even trying to go fishing, but he ended up catching the biggest animal of his life. And I just love how quickly he tried to paddle away in his tiny little kayak. If the alligator was hungry enough, he could have easily tipped it over and had a quick bite to eat. Finally, number one, I don't know about you guys, but if I ever saw an anaconda slithering in the water where I was fishing, I would just get rid of the rod and just call it a day. But for some reason, the fisherman decided it would be a good idea to harass a large anaconda who can easily strangle him and eat him. So here's a clip of what you should never do while fishing.
Is this guy where the anacondas swallow their prey whole, starting with the head, or that they can kill their prey by constricting them until their bones crush and they die from internal bleeding? I'm thinking this guy didn't know any of this. He skipped school. <laughs> He's extremely lucky because his anaconda probably just had a big meal, so he doesn't want to feed again for, you know, several months. At number 10, we have the sarcastic French head. Okay, this sounds more like an insult than a fish, but I swear to God it's a real thing. It almost looks like an eel and has a longer snake like body and a large mouth. You can catch this thing swimming around 240 feet underwater, that's 73 meters for all our non American viewers. Although this frightening sea serpent has a devilish appearance, it isn't big enough to swallow you whole. The entire thing clocks in around 25 centimeters, the equivalent to 10 inches. These things are extremely wily and they're able to hide inside small cracks and even abandoned shells. But don't take this defensive maneuver lightly. They will still come at you if given the chance. They are one of the more aggressive fish you can counter in the deep blue sea. If you get close to their home, you can trust that they will fly out and try to snap at you. Also, they have a pretty strong defense against predators. Around their eyes are these hardened spines that will stab anything unlucky enough to get too close. This isn't a fish you're going to want to put in your home aquarium unless you want to see all the other fish get eaten. At number nine, we have the Japanese spider crab. If you put spider in the title of anything, I'm usually not interested. There hasn't been a situation where I'm looking to hang out with a bunch of spiders, but who knows what the future holds. On top of that, you might not know this, but crustaceans used to be considered insects and we were not supposed to eat them. It wasn't until high class hotels started serving them up as delicacies in the 60s that changed the culture. And the Japanese spider crab was definitely a culprit of why people thought these things were bugs. They have a set of long spiny legs and two pincers at the end of extended arms. They actually have the longest leg span of any anthropod. Not only that, but they can be around 19 kilograms or 42 pounds. That's a lot of crap. But if these things freak you out, don't worry. They're only found in Japan and hang out around 300 meters underwater. Also, I'm glad we changed our opinion on them because they are tasty. At number eight, we have the frilled shark. This creature literally looks like it was pulled out of the Jurassic period. Every picture of this animal makes it look like it's a thousand years old and maybe on the verge of death. Some people have nicknamed the frilled shark the living fossil. If just the sight of it makes you never want to go in the water, again, you shouldn't be too afraid. These creatures are extremely rare. It's unknown how many are still in the wild, but researchers think it could be less than a thousand. They tend to stick around in warmer waters. They have been seen in waters around Japan and the Indian Ocean. Their body looks like a cross between an eel and a shark, like the two of them did that fusion thing from Dragon Ball Z. And these boys can go deep, which shouldn't be a surprise. The title of this video is Fish Found in the Deep. But they can be found as deep as 4200 feet or 1200 meters. So unless you're a technical diver who has multiple gas blends or rebreather and you're diving in the Indian Ocean, you shouldn't worry about seeing one of these guys. In fact, if you run into one of these guys, you should probably buy a lottery ticket. That's how rare it is. At number seven, we have the blobfish. Even if you don't know this guy by name, you know him by look. There have been countless memes of the blobfish. It kind of looks like a sad man covered in some sort of goo. Like if you took Bill Dotry from King of the Hill, melted him a little bit, and and then put a slime coating over him. This guy hangs out around 1200 meters or 3900 feet. He's not particularly dangerous, but has been voted the ugliest animal of all time by the Ugly Animal Society, which is a strange thing. Kind of rude if you ask me. I'm sure if you dressed this guy up and he started hitting the gym and he got a new haircut, he would be a real looker. Also, the animal's so deep you can't even see him without a light source, so I don't think he really cares how he looks. At number six, we have the Pacific Black Dragon. We've got another eel-like deep sea creature. There's something about the cross between a fish and a snake that really rubs me the wrong way. And this guy has the look of something pulled right out of your nightmares. The Pacific Black Dragon can be found in the Pacific Ocean, no surprise, and hangs out at around 3,300 feet or 1,000 meters. This boy does not like sunlight. Sometimes it will venture a little closer to the surface at night, but he definitely likes it dark and cold, mainly for hunting. The Pacific Black Dragon has a little barbell antenna thing on the end of its chin. It can use this thing as a tool that will light up and basically lure fish closer to it. This way fish come to check it out, they get a 
false sense of security and when they get too close, BAM! They get eaten by the black dragon and it continues to hide in the shadows. At number 5 we have the giant squid. When you hear about creatures like this you wonder if the legends of sea monsters are real. The great kraken big enough to swallow a ship whole. Now the giant squid isn't that big, the largest one on record is around 43 feet which is too small to take down a massive pirate ship but since overfishing has become a thing so maybe thousands of years ago they were able to get that big. But leaving all the myths aside this creature is still massive. It hangs out at a maximum depth of 3300 feet or 1000 meters and they are massive. They have tentacles with huge suckers on them. Each one of these suckers has enough power to rip your skin right off your body. At number 4 we have the vampire squid. You call something the vampire squid and you're going to picture something swimming up next to you wrapping its tentacles around you while it sucks out your life force slowly, draining every last ounce of blood while you struggle to breathe and live. The vampire squid gets its name from its dark red complexion and deep dark environment. It also has photophores at the end of each one of its tentacles. Photophores are bioluminescent body parts. So it has 8 little light bulbs that it uses to make these eerie light shows. However with everything we just covered about this guy he is relatively harmless. He doesn't suck out your blood, he prefers marine snow, little debris floating down from the surface. You can also find him at 1000 meters below the surface. At 3 we have the oar fish. We are going back to the long snake like fish because they give me the heebie jeebies. The oar fish is no joke. Not only is this thing extremely rare, there wasn't even a living one caught on camera until 2001, but they can get huge. A full grown oar fish can clock in around 600 pounds. That's so much fish. Teach a man to fish, feed him for a day. Give a man 600 pounds of fish and I hope he has a chest freezer because there's going to be leftovers. Not only can this bad boy get heavy, it can stretch 36 feet. You could fit you and all your friends on this guy. And don't worry about it trying to eat you, it only eats plankton. And it's also a very deep boy, chilling at 900 meters or 3000 feet. At number 2 we have the goblin shark. Once again the deep sea is combining things that should never be crossed up. It makes me think of a shark who got the green goblin serum in him and he's flying around on a deep sea glider throwing fish themed pumpkin bobs at crab traps. Can somebody out there draw that for me please? I really need to see that come to life. This shark is a creature of habit. His genetic design hasn't changed in 25 million years and his family tree stretches back 125 million years. When people say OG oh, they're talking about this shark. If it ain't broke. Don't fix it. He likes to hang out at around 1300 meters or 4300 feet. Goblin sharks get their name from their long goblin nose and jagged teeth. They have the ability to sense small electric fields to pick up on prey and when they do find something to eat they can shoot their jaw out like a bear trap. It sounds like something that you would see in a fever dream. And for the number one spot we have the colossal squid. We had the giant squid on and now it's time to up the ante. This is the real kingpin of the ocean deep. The colossal squid is the deepest of the deep boys on this list. It will swim down to 2200 meters or 7200 feet. I think if a human goes down that deep without some sort of submarine we just implode or freeze to death. This guy is so big if he's taken out of the water he will weigh over 1000 pounds and stretches 16 meters or 50 feet long. And he doesn't even have suckers like other squid. It has hooks. That's right along this beast's body there's a bunch of long hooks that it uses to rip open its prey. For a long time these things were thought to be just myths until a dead one washed up on a shore. Seeing one of those even dead will stop you going from any deep sea swim. Alright coming in at number 10 we have globsters. What is this? I will give you a good 5 seconds to look and then you can let me know what you think it might be. Nope the answer isn't a decomposing luck dragon. I don't think so. Anyway, like maybe it actually is though. I kind of tricked you because nobody really knows what this is. This was found ashore in the beach town of San Antonio in the oriental Mindoro region in May 2018, this is in the Philippines. Unidentified washed up sea creatures are referred to as globsters because they're globby and blobby, I don't know. Some people think that it was a whale but the 6 meter long object was actually covered in white hair which as we know whales are not. A lot of super 
superstitious locals thought it was a bad omen. Local resident Tam Malling said, The big lobster is a sign of something bad coming. Please pray for us. To be honest, if I saw this monster, I'd pretty much start praying too. The less superstitious were simply complaining of the awful smell left by the dead creature. Ugh, I can only imagine. Hands up, arachnophobics. Mm hmm, I see you, I feel you. Maybe you might want to close your eyes at number nine because we have sea spiders. Nope, 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 nope. And a second helping of no. It seems that spiders aren't just a land thing. I thought the spiders of the sea were crabs, but I was wrong. This particular menace that has been accidentally dragged up from the ocean is the Southern Ocean giant sea spider. Not to scale. He's big. He's really big. Some fun facts for you, this leggy blonde has organs in its pins. Literally. Ugh. And also, something else it literally does. Yeah, it sucks the life out of its prey through its legs. No thank you, no. I'm like, just gonna respectfully decline all sea spiders for the rest of my life. It's a choice. Ah, also a choice at number eight, we have peanut worms. Oh my, just when I thought I swore off peanut worms forever, here they are in my video. Get out. Seriously though, I am horrified by these creatures from the deep. The peanut worm is making me feel I don't know, I feel like uncomfortable isn't really a strong enough word. I would say deeply uncomfortable. Deeply, deeply, deeply uncomfortable. Imagine being the poor soul that pulls one of these up from the ocean. Like seriously, that really is probably more than they bargained for and isn't really safe for work. Look at them, flopping around being worms. Do you want to see a bunch of them together? Here you go. I honestly totally get why they're called the peanut worm, but at the same time, can we think of a slightly better name for them? Do you guys want to see one moving? Right, not so bad. Right? Okay, I'm absolutely not here for this. Coming into number seven, we have the pelican eel. No. Thank you, no. Like, does he or does he not look like a demon alien from the planet Gulp? I'm really not here for an eel in general, but a pelican eel? Ugh. This here chappy bob is a deep sea fish rarely seen by humans, but is sometimes hauled up by deep sea fishing efforts. Imagine bringing one of these to the surface, like ah. Some facts you need to know about this sea beastie, the last one you're actually gonna love. Firstly, it likes to whip its tail back and forth. Secondly, it can glow pink and red if it wants to. And thirdly, do you know what? I don't even really know how to explain it to you, so maybe I'm just gonna show it to you. Wait, what? What is that we are approaching here? Um, let's take a closer look. Oh, it can inflate. Cool, great, said no one ever. Coming into number six, we have this barnacle monster. I have to say barnacles are my absolute least favorite. You know in Pirates of the Caribbean when you meet Barnacle Bill? That's my literal nightmare monster. A barnacle on my face, ah! So in the spirit of how much barnacles turn my stomach, I wanna show you this utterly bizarre monster that washed up on a beach in New Zealand. News networks were dubbing this creature a monster and it is easy to see why. So this is a boatload of gooseneck barnacles and they're attached to something. They're long necked barnacles and they certainly look weird. Do you want to see them up close? <laughs> okay, so we know the explanation. It doesn't mean the thing that washed up wasn't any less scary because bleh. Coming into number five, we have the lamprey. No! I'm running out of ways to say no. I guess there is only one way and no. You may have seen images of lampreys floating around the internet. They make for shock thumbnails, but actually, these fanged demons are no clickbait. They're very, very real nasties of the ocean. They're primitive eel-like fish from the North Atlantic and the Baltic. Sadly though, they have actually invaded the Great Lakes of the United States and Canada. They're a pest. Anyway, do you want to see inside the mouth of this devil on earth or ocean? Yep, yeah, they are terrifying. Just as terrifying as the thumbnails, right? How do they eat? Well, they are parasitic and they bore into flesh of their prey, sucking their blood dry. Brilliant! Ho ho! Coming into number four, we have the anglerfish. Nope, 
Do you want to see a lovely picture to brighten up your day? Of course you do! Let me show you! Wait, what? No! That happy fisherman has dragged up an anglerfish from the ocean, and these are. I mean, gross, right? Horrifying. Do you want to see what it looks like when it hasn't been bested by a pesky human? You got it, here it is. And another? Lovely! That is a female. But do you want to know what happens with the males? Do you want to know how they breed? Basically, the males are much smaller and they're parasites. They attach themselves to the back of the female and then they impregnate her without her noticing. <laughs> Once he is attached to her, he basically dissolves into her body. Nature. Ain't it beautiful? Back with the unexplainable at number three, we have the Montauk monster and the Brooklyn Bridge monster because they might actually be the same type of dead thing. A grotesque dead animal washed up on the shore in Montauk in the American state of New York in 2008. Now the monster looks kind of like a cooked dog with a beak. It had cryptozoologists going at absolutely wild. Now a similar unexplained creature washed ashore on the Manhattan facing side of Brooklyn in 2012. The pictures are kind of awful, so maybe close your eyes for a second. Ah, that's really sad. I feel really sad. Another unexplained washed up monster at number two. What could this be? It's definitely more fishy than our number three. Like literally, what is this? This terrifying fish was dragged up from the ocean by a Russian fisherman in 2017. It became a social media sensation. Roman Fedorstov has become Instagram's most famous fisherman. What an accolade. He has over 510,000 followers, which is crazy. Although none of them can tell you what this creature is. It's terrifying. That's all I can say. Also terrifying are all of the other creatures that he has papped and snapped and uploaded to the gram. None such as terrifying as the blobfish though at number one. <laughs> Mr. Blobfish, he scares me, but actually, I think I love him. <laughs> Look at his repugnant, creepy face, but yet yeah, there really is something weirdly cute about it, and I think that's what scares me the most. <laughs> These are a deep sea fish that live off the waters of Australia, Tasmania, and New Zealand. To me, the blobfish kind of looks like a bladder. A bladder personified. It looks like it acts. Basically, it floats around with little energy and effort, swallowing things that pass by. It's like the Mondays of the ocean. He just looks really glum. I get it. It'll get better, Blobfish. Can you imagine being the fisherman that brought up the Blobfish for the first time, honestly? It has been voted the ugliest creature in the world, but honestly, I actually think that I'm somewhat here for it. I mean, I'd never want to touch one, but I do love that they make Blobfish pl plushies. Seriously, look at it. Look at the sushi one. I think I actually might need it. I'm so confused. I'm so confused. Number 10. The Wolverine Fish. Hugh Jackman, if you're watching this, I love you. Also, this one's for you, pal. Let's do it. This year alone, there have been over 200 discoveries of freshwater fish. 200 more reasons why I'm not swimming in fresh water. Here we go. One of which is the X-Men inspired fish, the Hoplancistrus Wolverine. Yeah, these fish have strong lateral curved spikes called odontodes tucked under their gills, and they can extend and jab their prey with these prongs, these three prongs, hence the name Wolverine Fish. It's kind of cute. I don't know. I like the claws, which is terrifying for sure, but they're tiny claws, right? Just swimming around, Julius Caesaring people in the water. Number nine, the frilled shark. Okay, back in 2004, marine biologists discovered this uh, dinosaur, I guess, the frilled shark. Let's talk about him. Lurking about 870 meters below the surface, this guy looks like an eel at first, you know, and then you get closer and it's not. It's even scarier. Frilled sharks can grow up to seven feet long, which is like, you know, a foot taller than this lanky shark here. And they can fight like daredevil. They can hunt in complete darkness. They don't need to see anything to mess you up. Unless you're uh, skinny dipping, you don't need to worry about the frilled shark. He's not really buzzing around anywhere, thankfully. Frilled sharks are only found a mile below the surface. Have you ever dealt with one of these? Are you a diver? Have you seen a shark in person? I saw a shark once, but it was a, uh, it was a nurse shark. Also, it was uh, one of those like aquarium things where like you can like go in. I don't know. I was terrified. Number eight, the walking worm. Nice. I had the same nickname in high school. Let's talk about them. Meet the Hallucigenia fortis, named by Simon Conway Morris in 1979. Now, Conway Morris named it Hallucigenia fortis because of its bizarre and dreamlike quality. Isn't that dreamlike and 
nice and lovely? No, it's more bizarre. There were over 109 specimens of these strange aquatic creatures found, and they ranged in size from half centimeter to three centimeters long. Not too large, but still terrifying nonetheless. And since it was an invertebrate, it lacked a spine. Also, just like me, I'm like Gumby. You know what this, I don't know what this is. Oh, hear that crack? Defining features of the walking worm, as its name suggests, were these tentacles that protruded out from the body, which it would use to walk around. It had spikes that it maybe walked on. How terrifying is that? In 2015, scientists realized where its real head was. Yeah, we thought a fossilized stain was its head for like 35 years, and then in 2015, we found its real head. And it looks like it's grinning and it has two eyes. So dare I say worse than the stain observation. Number seven, the ruling squid. For ages now, sailors from Norway and Greenland have shared tales of a giant sea monster. Now with tentacles big enough to pluck you out of your boat. Doesn't this sound a little familiar? In 1857, Danish naturalist Jephita Strinstrup found a large squid beak. And soon after he was sent parts of another specimen from the Bahamas. So he got all these gross fishy parts, just a nice stinky table of work. And then he thought to himself, could this be the Kraken? These parts were a part of a species called a giant squid. It's called Architeuthis dux, yeah, which translates to ruling squid in Latin, which is terrifying. The ruling squid, okay, you got it. You rule the ocean, therefore I'm not going in it. Very little is known about giant and ruling squid, of course, because they're so hard to track down, but we did get a photo of one back in 2005 and a video of one in 2013. Both are equally as terrifying. Check them out. Eyewitness reports from sailors also describe a 60 foot squid. So those reports don't sound as crazy crazy after you see this, right? That's also totally an alien, like 1000%. We can just nip that in the butt. Number six, magnificent alien. While the rest of the world was in panic mode, a new sea sponge was discovered in 2020. How fun and cute is that? Again, we're gonna poke around and touch him and then it's gonna go extinct, so enjoy him while it lasts. He was named Advena Magnifica, which translates to Magnificent Alien. The sponge literally gets its name because it looks like E.T. How amazing is that? And to be fair, it does look like E.T. An ROV found this sample over 6,000 feet deep in the Pacific Ocean. They found it in what they call a forest of weird, which is an excellent nickname given what has uh, emerged from it. Just an alien sponge sticking their E.T. head out for some food. That's all we're looking at here. Christiana Castello Branco, the researcher who found this deep sea squishy, explains the discovery in an NOAA interview, saying that as all of these organisms are intricately connected by documenting and describing marine biodiversity, we are building a better understanding of life and the impact of humans on Earth. In this case, in the ocean. End quote. Yeah, that sounds like some Martian type stuff. I don't know how I feel about that. It's like, hey, we have no idea what's down below. Shall we continue searching? I'm like, no, we shouldn't. We should stop searching. This little guy is the key to humanity's survival. I feel it. I don't know. I just, something is, he's calling me. Number five, the rare whalefish. Located in California's Monterey Bay, scientists were able to get a close look at the fish with no eyes. Yeah, so he probably had no idea any of this was happening. Everyone's like, also, it's pretty unfair just to film him without his consent. He has no idea. This little guy relies on his other senses to hunt, obviously, and pick up its surroundings. This footage was from over 6,000 feet deep, so the lack of light just decided that the whale fish doesn't need eyes. Yeah, nature and history was like, you know what? Well, you don't need them, so we're just gonna take those back. It's like, what? Give him the choice, just in case. Let him look at a movie or a cool, Coral. It's great to get footage of them because whale fish are rarely recorded in the deep, let alone recorded alive. Number four, the smooth hand fish. Not to be confused with cool hand Luke, although that's also a pretty good time. The smooth hand fish was the first time in modern history where a marine type fish has gone extinct. Yeah, this fish was a shallow water bottom dweller and I personally love him because he looks like a Bowser minion, except I don't want to stomp on his head like Mario does, you know, I just want to keep him. He looks like he's in a bad mood all the time. I don't know, he looks like something's on his mind. He has a horn that protrudes protrudes out of his face, so I don't blame him, to be honest. Just 200 years ago, you would have seen these smooth dudes in the land down under in Australia. It lived in Tasmania's warm waters, and what made this fish so unique, as its name hints towards, is its little smooth hands. The smooth hand fish would seemingly walk with those hands along the ocean floor, using its fins as hands. So an angry looking fish with hands and a horn would walk towards you. Hard pass, never swimming again. Graham Edgar, marine ecologist at the University of Tasmania, sheds some light on its habits, explaining that these fish were homebodies. They didn't have a large habitat. They spent most of their time sitting in the seabed with an occasional flap just for a few meters if they're disturbed. And at that point, they would just walk away with their hands from the drama, but because humans got involved, we don't see these guys as much anymore. Number three, Chinese paddlefish. 
The Chinese paddlefish was one of the largest primary freshwater fish in the world, commonly measuring around three meters or, you know, 10 feet long. These fish were native to the Yangtze and Yellow River basins in China. It was one of just two of the paddlefish family. Now, since the 1990s, this fish has been listed on the critically endangered list with the two main culprits, of course, being us humans overfishing and habitat fragmentation. Now, unfortunately, in December 2019, because of several surveys that failed to locate any presence of these species, it has since been declared extinct. Yeah, there's a little bit of hope that I'll leave, but so far it's, yeah, we can't find any of these. I hope somewhere there's a colony of these little paddlefish hiding somewhere and we just can't find them, you know? Keep hiding, don't let us find you. We'll just f it up again. Don't let us reel you in or catch you. Sadly, it's believed that this fish went extinct somewhere between 2005 and 2010, but he's pretty cool looking, so we'll always remember him. Number two, the snapping shrimp. Okay, this is terrifying. These things are tiny and yeah, never again. This little guy can literally create a sonic boom as it attacks you. That's how fast it is underwater. You will not see it coming, and neither did this explorer. Here's a clip of a mantis strip punching through a diver's swimming gear. Yeah, right through their water shoes. Just like that, easy. Ow. Ow. That really hurt. Isn't that insane? They're often found in coral reefs, oyster reefs, and these little guys, these pistol shrimp, they hit their prey at 100 kilometers an hour. And in doing so, a large air bubble is created. And because this Mike Tyson shrimp is so quick with the jab, the following pop is around 200 decibels. So the sound alone from the attack stuns their prey. Or if they're lucky, it'll sometimes just kill them, which is honestly how I'd want to go. I wouldn't want to get punched by one of these things. Imagine one of these the same size as you. That's, well, that's literally Mike Tyson, actually, now that I think about it. And finally, number one, the electric eel. Great song, not a great animal. You don't want to poke around these guys. Awesome, that's the worst thing I've ever seen. Let's talk about them. The moray eel, first of all, don't do that. Don't go up to a random eel and start rubbing it like it's a genie lamp. That's not ideal. That was the moray eel. That one can bite your fingers off. But you should never touch an eel in the first place because a lot of them, and I mean a lot of them, are electric. Yeah, as its name suggests, these type of eels can mess you up even if you were to get the first hit, even if you bopped it yourself. Specifically, the newly discovered two and a half meter Electrophorus volti, appropriately named after Alessandro Volta, AKA the guy who invented the battery. Yeah, it's named after the guy who invented the battery. This is an animal swimming around underneath us. It can release a shock of up to 860 volts. That's more than seven times the voltage of a wall plug. Things powering all of these units. A swimming wall plug that gets hungry. Sick, we love nature. Isn't nature lovely? Awesome. Kicking off our list at number 10, a 16 foot sea monster. Okay, here we go. I saw this one on TikTok. A lot of users were calling to build the ark after this one was caught and quite frankly, I agree. I'm never swimming again. Right off the coast of Chile, this creature, 16 feet long, might I remind you, it was found and apparently it's a bad omen. To even see this colossal oarfish in the wild means a tsunami or an earthquake is on its way. Good. We love good Good omens in this house. This ugly lad got over 10 million views on TikTok. He lives in Erica, Chile. Let's see if we can get him verified by the new year. I kind of love him. I love how in the photo too, everybody is in shock. That's real fear in everyone's face right there. They're like, where did this come from? Sorry, what? They all see a Zelda boss just hanging in front of them. Nice. There's one guy in the photo who's like, he has his camera out and he's not even pointing at the fish. He's just like, just completely baffled. Number nine, a long nose chimera. I have a long nose. Nothing like this guy, but pretty, that's all right. I don't know. A Canadian lad caught this next one. His name is Scott Turner and he's from Nova Scotia. Back in 2016, he was deep water fishing and he had no idea what the hell he caught. And to be fair, I, I still have no idea. And I wrote this thing and I'm looking at it. A fishing trawler off the coast of Newfoundland hauled this up. California Academy of Sciences says chimeras are a group of scary fish that branched off from even scarier sharks nearly 400 million years ago. So they're massive for a reason. They have, you know, they have large cousins. It runs in the genes, I guess. Their genes run in the family. They're all jacked and scary, I guess. Crew members aboard the Canadian trawler in their late 50s and early 60s, they've done this their whole lives, okay? They fished their entire lives. And they've only seen this maybe once in their entire career. Yeah, some deep sea horrors for you on this fine August evening. Hit that thumbs up. We're well on our way. Let's keep it going. Number eight, not a fish. Okay, sometimes you catch something that's not meant to be caught on water or on land. You don't want to catch this one. A hand explosive was reeled in. Yeah, the guy caught a military 
know, one of those. He reeled one of those in. One of those things you use in James Bond, where we always, you know, miss. And we're like, ah, didn't hit him all. The guy reeled in a military explosive, but he kept calm. He called the police. They came in and they were also baffled. They're like, how did you catch this? Did it, did it pull? Did it put up a fight? What's going on? How did this hand-sized weapon make it into this little Kalame River? Or when? Zero idea. This is a common discovery in rivers. A lot of people do what's called magnetic fishing. They try and find old-timey weapons. So some European countries actually ban the sport because they don't want anybody pulling an Indiana River. Imagine reeling in something bigger from World War II, like a bigger, you get it, horrible. Number seven, Cyclops Shark. Oh, I love this guy, he's so cute. Back in 1933, Dr. Thomas Hall Shasted explained in an article that the future of humans will be Cyclops, okay? They only need one eye. The human eye originally evolved to see far into the distance, but as the modern human reads, writes, repairs watches, cuts gems, you know, swipes on Tinder, everything close up, we might just need one eye. See you later, IMAX 3D. Sorry, James Cameron, guess I'll miss that one. Well, this next catch is perfect for that future. The shark with one eye, is he real? Is he? Help. The Cyclops shark. We saw him in 2015. You might remember him. The shark was removed from a pregnant dusky shark caught by commercial fishermen in the Gulf of California. Shark researchers have examined the preserved creature and found that its single eye is made of functional optical tissue. So it's normal, I guess, in a way. But it wouldn't have survived the conditions of the real world. Less than 50 of these abnormalities have been recorded in history ever. So there you go. 49 left to see with your one eye. Number six, ancient antlers. Again, it's odd to find something that's not a fish. Like say a World War II weapon, or say some antlers. Yeah, at first you'd think you caught a fish, but in reality it could be the antlers of a 10,000 year old giant elk. Either one, who knows. May the odds be ever in your favor. The shape, the weight, the resistance of the water, I would fully believe that I caught a massive fish. It's like moving around with the current. I'm like, oh, what is this? No, he didn't catch any fish this time, just ancient history. Turns out when you're fishing in a local lake in Ireland, anything's possible. Just don't pull out Nessie, please we don't want to pull out Nessie. Number five, black marlin. Okay, for a halfway point, I need to show you the best thing that I've ever seen online. Everybody is okay in this video, first of all. Just gonna start off by saying that, okay? Great. Back in 2012, a black marlin off Cairns, Australia, jumped and landed aboard the little Audrey. It's great. I mean, I feel bad for the fish, of course, but it's a great clip. Check it out. Sometimes you don't have to fish. Sometimes a fish will just appear. A nice 600 pound fish will sometimes jump in your boat. How scary must that be? So the fish jumps in and then throws a seat at another fisherman before going back into the water. How amazing is this? Check the guy out on the far right. He gets his head bonked by a chair because a fish hucked a chair at him. Honey, what happened to your head? Oh, a black marlin hucked a chair at me. Yeah, it was fun. He's like, yeah, I was f***ing with it though. I'm not gonna lie, I kind of deserved it. I deserve the chair, I'm okay. Number four, Chuck Lagoon. This lagoon was Japan's main base during the war, but come 1944, the United States launched an attack, which some still deem as Japan's Pearl Harbor. So now there's 60 ships that have sunken down and there's around 250 planes all lying in the water. It's a graveyard. So for 70 years, there's been this massive graveyard just sitting in the Pacific, and it wasn't until recently we finally got a good look at these haunting artifacts. Thanks to deep sea divers and fishers. Yeah, thanks for hanging out in scary waters. I appreciate you. I don't like to swim in lakes, so you're so brave. Terrifying. These photos are terrifying. These fishermen have described the atmosphere, filled with, you know, gas mask, bullet, and of course bones, as extremely haunting. Nobody was expecting these artifacts to be that well preserved either after all this time. But photos now serve as a haunting reminder of naval warfare. Number three, deep sea anglerfish. Living at depths of over 6,000 feet, the deep sea anglerfish hunts in complete darkness. We should have never seen these fish, but unfortunately, now thanks to me, you have to. It was first discovered back in 1833 when a Greenland fisherman saw the horror up close after it washed up along the shore. They then took it to Denmark where it was first referred to as the football fish or the man gobbler. Both great names. One's a little f***ed up, the other's kind of cool, but both great names. Female anglerfish have a glowing lure on top of their head. It's awesome and it's scary. And it's something I'm glad hides at the bottom of our ocean, if I'm being honest. This light here is created due to bioluminescent bacteria. Thousands of fish have it and the deep sea anglerfish uses it in front of its face to hunt. Yeah, it draws in fish right in front of its massive, scary mouth. That's its main method of hunting. It has to be dazzling because, well, look at it. It's certainly not fast, definitely lacks speed and agility. Plus, living in complete darkness, they have to move slowly and rely on their senses to hunt. And as for prey, well, she'll take what she can get, no matter how big. I hope we never catch another one of these. Please stay deep and stay mysterious. Stay down, I'm good. Number two, an eyeball. Back in 2012, this ball of yuck was found by a Florida fisherman. The classic insane Florida headline, here we go. 
show right on cue. The eye was the size of a softball, and for a while, beachgoers were speculating what monster it could belong to. The state's Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission determined that the eye belonged to a swordfish. And given the straight cuts on the eye, it's clear that an angler cut it out and then threw it like a shot put back in the water. How horrible is that? Awful for the fish, but also, if you found this, that would be so jarring. I'm just reeling in and being like, oh, what's that? An eye. I'm out. I am out. And finally, number one, Bolella jellyfish. It's not uncommon to find a jellyfish or two while fishing, certainly not. But what about while you're fishing from the beach? That's a little, little bit odd. Especially when they arrive in, I don't know, the hundreds? These specific jellyfish called Bolella are so light that the wind will push them all to shore eventually. How sad is that? Yeah, they didn't make the UFC weigh in, so now they're getting kicked out of the ocean. All they gotta do is eat a little bit more food, that's it. Hundreds of these little guys, three to six times a year, will just get blown out of the water. What a horrible way to go. That's it's like us being blown into the sea slowly. I'd be like, uh, help, please? They're blue and beautiful and only about eight centimeters long. And back in 2014, thousands of these Valella jellyfish washed along the shore along the northwest side of the United States. They look not as great when they're on shore and dead. They look like gross deflated balloons. And again, three years later, thousands more washed ashore again. Little haunting. They're also referred to as by the wind sailors because they have a little sail that pokes above the water, kind of like a shark. They have a little, little sail. And their tentacles will hang underneath the surface. So they're literally go wherever the wind blows them. How cute is that? They have a little sailor hat. Yeah, we had to finish on a nice cute note. A little fish with sailor hats. That's, that's a little better than whatever the fish that was earlier. Yuck. Uh, coming in at number 10, the stoplight loose jaw. Found scattered in the depths of just about every ocean around the world, these slimy black creatures with beating red eyes should have truly never been brought into the light of day. On top of its tiny insect-like frame, the stoplight loose jaw also has long creepy needle-like teeth. But its real claim to fame is its huge jaw that can measure up to a quarter of the creature's length. Strangely, there is no actual floor to the jaw, but this is to reduce water resistance so that it can snap shut quickly, capturing its prey in milliseconds. Due to this terrifying swiftness, they are also sometimes called rat trap fish. Oh, and remember those pointy needle teeth? Well, because there is no flesh to enclose their wide hinging jaw, the teeth serve almost as spears to pierce through their prey before swallowing them whole. I'm just crossing my fingers that I don't get reborn as a bottom feeder in my next life because I never want to come into contact with these fish for as long as I live. Next up at number 9, the black scabbard fish. A deep sea predator, this creature had fishermen confused when they first found it as no one could agree what the heck it was. With a strangely elongated body and large fang teeth protruding from its snout, it looks like some hybrid of the alien from the alien movies and an ancient eel. Generally they are found just west of the British Isles and known to eat many different kinds of fish, crustaceans, and cephalopods, though their favorite is apparently the blue whiting. Now if you ever find yourself visiting France or Spain, watch out because these eel monsters are considered a delicacy and quite often consumed. But due to their diet, you run the risk of parasitic infection if not cooked properly. So just think twice before you take your chances or you might be looking like some strange alien creature if you aren't careful. Coming in at number 8, the rat tail. Also sometimes referred to as grenadiers, these arctic deep sea creatures are unlike any other. For starters, they've got giant eyes and big swollen lips that hang from their underside, rivaling even the best lip filler you can get on land. Their head is the largest part of the fish and the body slims gradually as it goes down the tail, giving them kind of a giant creepy tadpole vibe, measuring about a meter in size. Rat tails also have a light delivering organ organ called photophores found near the rear end, but scientists have no real clue what its exact purpose is, but it's thought that they use the light to search for food in the deep dark ocean. Despite their creepy exterior, they have been known to be found in seafood markets or even restaurants, but as for me, I think I will be steering clear from eating anything described as a rat or a tail. Next up at number 7, the chimera. With distant relations to sharks, these fish are often referred to as ghost sharks, rabbit fish, rat 
fish, or even spook fish. The strange alien like species looks kind of like spooky underwater robots, as they have these unique lines all over their body that, to me at least, kind of look like pieces of welded metal. Found in almost all the world's oceans, excluding the Arctic, the chimera are completely scaleless, similarly to sharks, and on their dorsal fin have a highly venomous spine for protection. And if a scaleless, venomous deep sea creature wasn't enough for you, to top it off, male chimeras are known to have a retractable, intimate appendage located on their forehead. Now, if that doesn't scream science fiction, then I don't know what will. In the past, these cartilage creatures were hunted for their liver oil as it was commonly used as a lubricant for guns, but thankfully this is no longer a common practice. So let's just all agree to leave these creepy robot ghost sharks in the deep sea and we'll all be better off. Next up in our number 6 spot, the wolffish. This deep sea creature gets its name due to its resemblance to the canine wolf species as it has huge sharp teeth, a strong jaw, and overall predator like appearance. But it is sometimes referred to as the devil fish for its terrifying face. Now, unlike the wolf, the wolf fish is actually a lone hunter, and in the cold waters of the Arctic has evolved to produce antifreeze proteins which circulate in the blood to keep its body functioning in the unruly temperatures. But despite this incredible evolution, the wolffish does not actually have a swim bladder, meaning it has to keep swimming at all times or the sheer weight of itself would cause it to sink. Unfortunately, the wolffish is at a high risk of extinction due to overfishing, so considering that, I think it's best we leave this scary creature in the depths of the sea where it belongs. Coming in at number 5, an unknown cardinal. Cartilage fish. There is creepy, there is horrifying, and then there is just straight up strange. Found by a Russian fisherman, Roman Fedorstov, we have truly no clue what it is or anything about it. All we can tell is that it's entirely made of cartilage, and due to that, it's almost completely translucent. The fish has small, spiny teeth, small eyes, and a gooey, jelly like inside that if you look at it for too long, you kind of just start to feel a little woozy. The unnamed creature is truly an oddity of the sea, and I could have gone the rest of my life without knowing of this alien specimen, but since I had to see it, now so do you. After its capture, the fisherman took to his Instagram to share his gruesome find with the world, and whatever it is, it's not something I ever want to come face to face with in the water. Next up at number 4, the frilled shark. Though it is referred to as a shark by name, it is really more of an ancient prehistoric serpent that should have never been found. It gets its name from the fringy gills along its body, and it has been recorded to measure as much as 7 feet in length. But the worst part is the 300 tiny razor sharp teeth that line its wide hinging jaw. I mean just imagine that bite. Ugh. Oh, and if that wasn't enough, it's covered in tiny chiseled scales that can cut you if you aren't too careful. The mysterious animal is known to lurk at the bottom of the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, although it will rise up higher at night to feed before returning once again to its deep dark habitat during the day. But don't worry, they don't swim up high enough to affect your midnight swim. Coming up next in our number 3 spot, the goblin shark. You may have heard of this rare species of deep sea shark, but if you haven't, you are in for a ride. Often referred to as living fossils due to their 125 million year existence, the goblin shark is truly a terrifying sight. And if the thought of a dinosaur shark didn't scare you, to make matters worse, these creatures can grow to be as much as 20 feet in length and weigh 450 pounds. Famously known to have slimy pink skin and a huge protruding snout, it gets its name for looking so much like, well, like a goblin, but contrasted by its huge snout are its teeny tiny little needle teeth. But don't let them fool you, as it can completely unhinge its jaw while feeding. Despite its notoriety, researchers know very little about this rare specimen, as it is presumed to be just naturally uncommon. But truth be told, I am glad there aren't thousands of these lurking in the waters, or I may never want to set foot in the ocean again. Coming in in our number 2 spot, 
Squid sulcus. First discovered in 2007 by a German research vessel in the southern Atlantic Ocean, this tiny one inch creature freaked out everyone at first. Armed with eight legs and two huge tentacles, well, I mean, proportionally speaking, it is only about an inch big after all, the part that shocked the world was what looked eerily similar to a set of human teeth. It's like something straight out of a science fiction movie. I mean, you can't tell me that it's not creepy to see what looks like a set of dentures on a miniature squid. But truth be told, despite how it looks, it's not actually teeth at all that we're seeing, but small, round, folded lips that we can only see a small part of. Like other squids, it has a sharp beak inside that it uses to catch and eat prey, and to date, it is the only one of its kind discovered. So let's just hope it stays that way. And last up in our number one spot, the sarcastic fringe head. Although its name sounds like some kind of bad 90s grunge band, the sarcastic fringe head is actually a highly aggressive creature that resembles what can only be described as a real life demogorgon. Found off the west coast of North America, they are extremely territorial and are able to fully fan out their jaws, exposing a row of razor sharp teeth to scare off and intimidate others of its kind in hopes to get the best piece of turf. The bigger the better when it comes to the mouth of the sarcastic fringe head, but if the sheer size of their mouth doesn't work, they will actually slam their faces together and essentially mouth wrestle to get the job done. However, in a complete 180, it is actually the males that are the care providers as once a female lays her eggs, she will leave immediately and the male will guard them until they are hatched. Whether their extreme aggression is about getting the best home or protecting their eggs, I never want to come near one of these terrifying creatures for as long as I live.